Hi, everybody, and welcome to a second application of relation learning, which is called time scoped relations. Now, actually, this is a slightly different flavor of relation learning in that it does not use the relation learning algorithm that we talked about previously, you know, the one running on the cloud. This one works slightly differently, and we're going to tell you all about it in this week's video. Now, to be fair, there is already a nice video on this topic. Uh, check out kata number 28 if you want to know more. Now, this kata really focuses on demos. It's not going to go as deep as this one. So I definitely recommend to check out this one, the current video, instead. All right, so let's dive into it. What is time scope relation learning? Well, in time scope relation learning, the idea is that you help us help you. And how do I do how do we do that? Or how can you do that? Well, assume that you're looking at a parameter and you're interested in a specific part of that trend graph. Then it can be interesting if you just select that part of the trend graph and use this light bulb instead of the one on the top right. So the top right light bulb uses the relation learning algorithm that's running in the cloud. And it doesn't take into account the time range that you're interested in. No, it takes into account the entire behavior of the parameter. But sometimes it's much more interesting if you can tell the system, hey, look, I'm really interested in this moment of time. And this you can do with time scoped relation learning. Now, I'm going to kick us off with a few examples on why sometimes this is better than using the light bulb on the top right. All right, first example. Let us assume that you have three parameters, parameters A, B, and C. And clearly, this is mocked data. Now, as you see, parameter A and B are completely related up to this point. And you see that parameter A and parameter B are actually identical to each other. But then something happened, namely parameter C took over. Maybe, I don't know, they switched off a certain device and they started another device. And so as of this time, say the 9th of February, parameter A and C are related and parameter A and B are no longer related. Now, assume that, okay, here in July, you would ask relation learning, okay, which parameter is related to parameter A? Well, the algorithm will then falsely return parameter B. Why? because it has learned from the past that parameter A and B were related. And it didn't have time enough yet to learn that this relation isn't there anymore. Yeah. Ideally, you would have the algorithm replying that parameter A is related to parameter C and that that's the one you should look at. Okay, Time scope relation can help you out here. Another example. Again, consider three parameters, A, B, and C. And this time, assume that A and B were related, but only up until the 15th of March, and then parameter C took over. Now, assume that the user is interested in parameters related to parameter A on the 27th of August. So you want to investigate some issue that happened in the past. Now, since the relation between parameter A and B has been broken since the 15th of March, our cloud-based relation learning algorithm has forgotten all about that relation. And instead, when you ask about parameters related to A, it's simply going to propose that you should check out parameter C. But of course, you don't want that because you're interested in this problem. And at that point in time, parameter A was not related to parameter C. It was related to parameter B. Again, time scope relation learning can help you out there. A final example is this one. Again, clearly mocked data. Here we see the total memory usage on a server. And we assume that actually no memory is used except in seven cases. So there are these seven spikes up to two gigabytes. Now underneath this trend graph, you see another picture which shows you the cost of these spikes. The first spike was apparently due to a spike in the Chrome memory. And the Chrome memory spiked three times. Then there was the Visual Studio memory, which caused a spike here twice, here and here. And finally, apparently there was also a spike in the Pac-Man memory, 
uh, yeah, for some reason. Now, in this case, it's very difficult for our relation learning algorithm to learn this relation. I mean, the basics is, or the basis is that parameters are related if their alarms coincide. But, well, the alarm on the Visual Studio memory only coincides with an alarm or a spike here in two out of the seven cases. So that's not so much, right? So here again, it can be very helpful if you can select the area of the trend graph that you're interested in. All right, so that's time scoped relations. How does it work? Select the relevant part of the trend graph. And if you do that, the other time ranges are completely ignored. And we're only going to look at relations that we find based on change points in this selected time range. So you select the time range and data miner is going to check which other parameters had behavioral changes in this time range. And those are the parameters that it's going to propose to you. Now, as I said, this algorithm does not run on the cloud. So we had to do our best to really restrict the resources that are used. That's why at the moment, when you select a time range on a parameter, data miner is only going to compare this time range for all the other parameters of that same device. It's not going to try to find relations between parameters on completely different devices. Now, we do want to improve this. In fact, one of our plans is to also allow the algorithm to find relations on devices that are in the same service as the original device. But this is still work in progress. OK, that's enough technical stuff. Let's show a demo. So I'm going to activate, I'm going to show my data miner. Voila, let me put it right here. And you can follow along with this example because uh, you probably have installed the companion catalog package for this course. Now, if you if you have done so, you see here the time scope relations view, and you have this element right here. Now, if you've downloaded or deployed this package a long time ago, it might be needed that you duplicate this element and start it from scratch. So you would duplicate it as such. Voila. And then you would need to press this generate data button and wait a little bit until data generated mentions yes. Yeah. So if you want to follow along and you notice that this element isn't behaving as it should anymore, just proceed by duplicating it and reading in the data again. Okay. Now, I will not need to do that because I just installed this element. So all my data is here. OK, now let me demonstrate time scoped relation. I'm going to open the available physical memory parameter. OK, let's give it some time to load and let's zoom out. Ah, uh, uh, by the way, a nice uh, interesting fact is that apparently here we're going to run out of memory soon, right? So here you see that the proactive cap detection has um, detected an issue. And let me quickly show you that indeed at one alarm is predicted in the near future, we have this available physical memory that is going to go to zero. OK, but OK, that was the topic of another video. So let's um, forget about that. Right. OK, so I'm going to zoom back out and check out my available physical memory. And let me put myself back on the screen so you can see me. OK, we're going to zoom out. And you immediately see that there are some weird behaviors in this available physical memory. There was a drop here, but it recovered. Then there was a more permanent drop here. And then there was what seems to be a level, uh, a memory leak here. Now, as a user, you probably want to know which process was responsible for this, right? Well, let's check it out. We use time scope relation learning. We select this part of the trend graph. We click the light bulb and our time scope correlation learning algorithm is proposing us to look at the memory usage of the Visual Studio IDE. I click and the memory usage of Visual Studio is now being added to this trend graph. And indeed, you see that this spike or this drop down perfectly coincides with this spike up. Okay. Now, you can do the exact same thing for the other 
strange behaviors, right? Let me do one more. Maybe I'm interested in this drop. I select part of the trend graph, hit the light bulb, and it's telling me to look at the Java runtime. Okay, I click and I'll see what happens. Ah, you indeed see that the Java runtime started to take up more memory at the time of this drop. Voila, simple, easy, efficient, not difficult at all, right? That's time scope relation in action. Okay, so let us go back to the presentation and wrap things up. First of all, what about prerequisites? Well, time scope relation learning requires anomaly detection because, well, what's the underlying idea I told you? It's going to look if other parameters had behavioral changes in your selected range. So it needs to fetch anomalies. It needs to have anomaly detection enabled. It also requires an indexing database, such as Elastic or STAS, because it needs to perform some complicated queries on the database. What about resources? Well, don't worry, they are completely ignorable. Um, actually, nothing is done unless a user selects a part of a trend graph. And then we just fetch the change points, but we restrict it on change points on the same element. And also CPU wise, there's really not that much that needs to be done. So no need to worry about that. If you like this feature, definitely check out some further resources. In the kata, we also give the demo that we did here, and you can find more references in the docs uh, as mentioned here. All right, you're now a time scope relation learning expert. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video, where we'll be talking about alarm focus, which acts like a spam filter on your alarm console. See you there.